Oz Horse, promoting the Australian thoroughbred. What she does to people, I've never seen anything like it in my life. She is unparalleled, black caviar, perfect. It's been unbelievable the way the people are taken to her. Um, it's been, been a tremendous ride. Still the indisputed champion of the world. We've never seen the like of her before. The invincible one. And the wonder from down under wins again. Black caviar, 19 straight from Hayless. Just spine tingling to watch that. To witness the best at their very best is something very, very special. What makes a racehorse touch the public is subjective. On the flat in recent times, we've had further flight, double trigger, Persian punch in the great Yates. And then the Shergar, oh so sharp, dancing brave, see the stars, and of course, the mighty Frankel. Here in Australia, Farlap will always be the legend. Maccabi Diva, an outstanding achiever. But now, there's something else. Today, at Morfootville, Black Caviar bids to sizzle to a record-breaking 20 consecutive victories. She's put over 30,000 people on the gate. Now, I don't know about you, but I can't think of any other equine athlete who could do that. Three, two, one. What's the reaction been like to Black Caviar today? It's been good. Yeah. It was very excited to see the horse. Everyone was standing out there before taking photos and everything, so it was quite exciting. A lot of like the staff that put on the event have been really overwhelmed by the reaction. I mean, apparently they don't get this many people out here at Morfittville this often, so it's a huge deal. This is an unusual crowd, a big crowd. Very big crowd for Adelaide. Absolutely. Bigger than football. Yeah. <laughs> Bigger than football in Adelaide, so... It was in 1921 that Gloaming recorded a 19th consecutive victory at the top city tracks down under, equaling Desert Gold's feat five years earlier. But on April the 28th, 2012, Black Caviar would smash that achievement going 20 straight with success in the Group 1 Sporting Bet Classic. From around Australia, indeed from around the world, people flocked to see her. And mixed amongst the crowd was a spectrum of fans. Tell me why you've come to see Black Caviar. Uh, this is my third time seeing Black Caviar. Um, it's just always such an awesome buzz and I wanted to take my mum and my husband this time so they could share in history. She's just unreal. I've actually seen 17 of 19 of Nelly's starts, so yes, I'm more than a big fan of hers. The only races I haven't seen was at, um, for the TJ Smith and the um, BTC Cup, and um, that's why I'm here in Adelaide. I drove 12 hours last night to get here. Did you make this dress specially? Uh, no, one of my best friends found it. We actually wore it when we saw her in win number 18 in Melbourne. And what makes her so special, do you think? Um, just the aura about her. She's invincible and she's just so regal the way she carries herself. So just tell me, how excited are you by seeing Black Caviar today? We're very excited. This is, <laughs> this is history in the making. This is a bit of fun. It's good for Adelaide. I think we're, we're privileged. Privileged. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm very excited to be honest. Yeah, very excited. And you've brought just about the youngest Black Caviar fan with you. He's 23 days old today and he's very excited. He's wishing his pa was here with him today and he's going to be telling his great-grandchildren one day how he saw black caviar. What she does to people, I've never seen anything like it in my life. I've been involved in racing my whole entire life and uh, the people's obsessions and um, what people are prepared to do for her, like travelling around the countryside to see her. I've never seen anything like it, the attendance of racetracks. This is actually official Black Caviar, Black Caviar uh, Cheer Squad t-shirt. So I've never known a Cheer Squad to be set up for any horse ever. And 
I've, I've seen big crowds at the races for horses, but I've never seen anything like black caviar. We know black caviar is good for the race goers, but what about the bookmakers? Adelaide based Ian Humphreys is with me. Ian, are you pleased to see black caviar? Oh, pleased to see it here for the crowd's sake, yes, very, very good for racing. Do you take any money on her at all, the 1 to 25 or whatever she'll be? No, it's not much good for a betting proposition, no, it doesn't, no good for that race, but uh, the rest of the races should be very good today. Do anyone, does anyone have a sort of sentimental bet just to have a, a winning ticket with her name on? Oh, if people like to keep the tickets, that's right, just, just, just for that, yeah, have a name on it, they'll keep them, but yeah, not much good for the bookies. But if she wins, you won't lose much, to be fair? No, I don't think so, no. I hope she wins, actually. <laughs> It's black caviar mania everywhere. Look at this family, for instance. I mean, you wouldn't let them out if you had the choice, but they've come here to Morfittville. Excuse me, sir, what's your name? Uh, Paul Friend, mate. Paul, how long have you taken to get here today? Uh, we've travelled about 11 hours from central west New South Wales, a little town called Peak Hill. 11 hours dressed like that? Well, not like this, no. We've stayed. <laughs> Maybe a bit of a family holiday of it, mate, yeah. But obviously this black caviar, she's really got to you. Oh, I think Australia as a whole, it's, it's taken over. Everywhere she goes, they, they pack the race courses. And uh, like you said, you're getting people that come to the races that sort of wouldn't normally come. Who's this little one? Oh, this is my daughter, Charlotte. She's, a, she's a, the apple of my eye. And then dressed in a bit of black caviar there, looking at the treat. Charlotte, so you'll be cheering for black caviar? Yep. How loudly will you cheer? Mm, I don't know. <laughs> Pretty loudly. Well, you're certainly decked out a right, right and, and this is a massive thing for all the families, isn't it, to see a great racehorse like this? Yeah, well, you guys up there in the uh, Northern Summer Sphere have been sort of uh, talking about your horses being the best. Well, I don't think you've got, got nothing on Black Caviar, to be honest. And, um, yeah, it, it is special for Australia. Peter Moody and everyone, that's, I suppose, put a lot of time into it. It's great, mate, yeah. Another Australian that we do just have to remind that we do have the best racehorse in the world, Frankel. But down under, you wouldn't say that at Morfittville too often. South West Australia's racing authorities had done all they could to promote the day. Chief Steward Graham Locke and Jockey Club Chief Executive Brenton Wilkinson made it clear what a huge day this was for sports fans. I look, it's a massive uh, event for uh, South Australia, Matt. Uh, we struggle as far as uh, profile in the national scene in Australia. We're not as uh, a big a racing environment as what Victoria, New South Wales or Queensland are. Uh, for us to have Black Caviar, 30,000 people at Morfordville, which would be the biggest crowd for at least 10 years. Uh, we last had Kylie Minow here uh, on Adelaide Cup Day was uh, a crowd approaching that. But we've been front and centre on the, on the, uh, the news. We've been uh, the front of the advertiser, our local paper. Uh, we've managed to take Australian Rules football off the paper, the front page of the paper on three mornings this week. So for the, for the uh, thoroughbred racing industry in South Australia, it's a massive boost. And you really made a massive effort, which I'm sure everyone is congratulating you on. Free travel to the track for the locals. I mean, you have basically said, we want you here to see this great day. Yeah, I think that's uh, a testimony to the effort of the South Australian Jockey Club and uh, their liaison with various government entities and so forth. Uh, normally when we go door knocking, uh, these people aren't as uh, necessarily as accommodating. And the fact that uh, we've got free buses just goes to show that uh, when you've got the right product, you do draw their attention. And, uh, but it's a credit to the SIJC and everybody involved. When we knew that we were a big chance to have her and we put it out there that she would possibly be here, the general admission ticket sales went through the roof. We were sold out Tuesday at 10 o'clock and that assists us on the day to get people in and out of the venue without any issues. Will this be the biggest crowd ever at Morfittville Racecourse? No, back in the uh, early 90s we had 35,000 here when Kylie Minogue came and sung on Adelaide Cup Day. But we were utilising the centre of the course then. But since rationalisation of one venue in the metropolitan area, we only use the grandstand side. So it will be the largest crowd we've had on a grandstand side only. And 30,000 is the maximum. And it is a shame for people who think they can come down and get a ticket. But please find another venue somewhere to watch history unfold. That could, of course, be the Darman Jubilee Stakes at Royal Ascot in June. I've got to ask you, though, as an official... Do you feel any way you're being biased by wearing a black caviar tie? I mean, does anyone else who's got a runner in the race slightly feel you're a bit biased? 
I am a bit biased, and I suppose it's because of the exposure. SA Racing needed a bit of a kick. Black Caviar and our owners and Peter Moody and his team at Moody Racing have given us that kick. We're back in the front pages of the papers. We're getting plenty of media coverage, and people are talking about racing, and that's what we need in this state. The, the world's become a smaller place, Matt, as your presence here today uh, is evidence of. And uh, last year I was in England and uh, had the, pl the uh, pleasure to go to Royal Ascot on three days, and, and the interest in... Uh, uh, English racing is now with, within Australia is massive because we get the, the major meetings beamed in through Sky Channel and so forth and Australians respect and understand the Frankels of the world and uh, the, uh, the other good three year old cult from Ireland the previous year uh, just as much as we hope the rest of the world acknowledges Black Caviar. Black Caviar is going to head for the Diamond Jubilee at Royal Ascot. You've been there as you've said. Could you imagine a scenario where Black Caviar gets beaten in a sprint race? Well, I hope she doesn't get beaten today, Matt. That's my first concern. Uh, if she's back here on the 11th of May, I hope she succeeds there as well. Uh, look, from the standard of sprinters in the two countries, it's, it's very hard to, to draw a parallel because the, the sprinters are, are trained differently. Our horses tend to have more run in their legs. Your horses tend to uh, uh, be prepared for the uphill finishes that are at Newmarket and Ascot. It'll be interesting to see how they, they match, but for sheer brilliance, uh, I don't think in Australia that we've seen the likes of Black Caviar as a sprinter. Greyhound and harness racing are usually commentator Hilton Donaldson's thing, so he was unsurprisingly as excited as anyone about seeing Black Caviar. Today is a celebration day for Adelaide. It's, uh, it's rare that we get the exposure that we have through the mainstream media that has been leading up to this race. Do I approach the race as a nervous person with the world looking at her. Hey, I'm, just, I'm here for the ride. I reckon I'm going to have some fun. She's a perfect 10. She's better than Brooke Shields. She's clearly better than a 10 out of 10. She's going for 20 out of 20. So just how good is Black Caviar? I ask Glenn Boss, the man who rode Maccabi Diva to her three Melbourne Cup wins. Just for sheer speed, she's a, 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 a sectionals for what she can maintain throughout a race. You know, nothing gets near at this point, and, and she's just great for our sport. When people took on Maccabi Diva, obviously she was in handicaps a lot of the time, and they felt they could beat her. With Black Caviar, when you go out and ride against her, is there really a feeling that you just simply cannot win? Basically, yeah, most people are running for second and third, and they're hoping to get uh, black type second or third against their name. Um, yeah, you, you, there is that aura about her. She's unbeatable at this stage. She just Everything she does, she just turns up and does her job. And she's just so much faster than everyone else at the moment. You know, even when she hasn't been probably right, she's uh, still too good for them. We've seen Schwazier take over Target, Miss Andretti, all really, really good horses that we thought were champions. Would this mare blow them out the water? Oh, there's not a horse in the world that can get near at the moment. Um, sectional say that she's better than any horse, and just the way she goes about things, she can lead, she can sit back off them. Uh, if she's got something to chase, she'll chase it down. She's, you've seen her do that uh, on, on occasion. You see her just dominate from the front, and horses just can't run her sectional. So she's just got every string to her bow, everything covered. And um, like I said, you're just running for a second and just you know, marvel at the spectacle of what she can do. Back home in the UK, people don't believe she's as good as she looks over here. They say she's beating nothing. Yeah. But in your opinion, then, are you saying this is probably the best sprinter you have ever seen? Oh, there's no doubt. She's um, not the best sprinter by a short margin. Either. She's the best sprinter by a long margin. Um, and, you know, she, she eases down and wins races. Um, you know, she's got something that's to fully test her. Um, you just see what uh, amazing animal she is. And, you know... You know, our best sprinters, our, our good sprinters go over to the over to UK and over those countries around the world. You see in Dubai just recently and, and beat the best sprinters around the world. We constantly, we do it, there's no, no fluke and we do it every year. Every time we take good sprinters somewhere, they win. And she's five and six lengths better than anything we've produced. So um, they're kidding themselves if they say she's not beating anything. I can ask you the impossible question for you to answer. Better than Maccabi Diva? Oh, listen, you never... Different. Different. You know, they're different for what they are. You know, she was a, a, a you know, a horse that raced over distances and, and, and she won, you know, uh, seven races, seven at the group, elite group one races, but they were seven majors, you know, Melbourne Cups, Cox Plates, Australian Cup, BMWs, you know, they're different, but they are just great for what they are, you know. I mean, don't try and compare them because uh, they, they can't be compared. They're just great individuals and great for our sport. Claire Lindrop is one of the most successful jockeys in the world. She's an AJC Derby winner. She's a South Australian champion. Claire, great to see you here at Morfittville this afternoon. We're all here, though, to see 
black caviar. Can she possibly be beaten? It's fabulous to see you here, Matt. It's fantastic to see so many people here. Uh, black caviar herself has transcended the sport. She's an athlete in her own, um, own right. And people have come from all over Australia to see her race here in Adelaide. It's really brought uh, racing purists together to watch you know, the beauty of the horse. Um, and she is something special when you watch her race, Black Caviar. Um, you know, she looks like she's doing it just so casually, so easily. She's an amazing uh, stride. I think the length of her stride is unbelievable. And to race against her, uh, I'm not today, unfortunately, but last year I did ride against her, I ran third. Uh, it's an unbelievable feeling to be thinking that you're traveling okay, and then to have a horse just put four lengths on you and disappear and you're battling out for prize money. Um, and, you know, I'm hoping that all goes well today and she can win today and then go on and um, hopefully can fly the Aussie flag in England. Has she beaten good horses, though, over here? I mean, we, we see Haylist and co. Is she beating good horses? Well, I guess only time will tell, Matt, but you can only win. Um, and the way she wins, I think, is extraordinary. Um, and I think, as she's just mentioned, I think horses like Haylist, which then go on and win on their own right, uh, do prove and hold the form up. Um, and unfortunately, she hasn't raced against big fields, but, um, you know, I don't think that really shows anything. I think the way that she does it is the most impressive, and the time she runs impressive. So, really, we can't knock that at all. And you're an Australian through and through. I mean, you, you must hate the fact that we still have the best horse in the world, who is, of course, Frankel. I knew you'd try and, you know, give you a little... Uh, fishing bite there, so, but uh, well, it's true. The facts are there. You can't argue with the facts. I was lucky enough to be an Ascot when Frankel won, and I was very impressed with with him and a beautiful horse as well. Um, of course, I'd love to see them clash, and I personally believe that Black Caviar is a better horse in the way that she wins. Um, but you know, I think that we will never be resolved unless they race against each other. And then there's always going to be you know, the English will come up with the excuse about you know Frankel wasn't right, had a setback, or something like that. <laughs> This may be an unfamiliar face to you in the UK, but back here in Australia, this is a living legend. Johnny Letts is a Melbourne Cup winning jockey. Johnny, great to see you here at Morfordville to see the great Black Caviar. Well, it's a pleasure to be here, Matt. And today, as you can see by the atmosphere, the people are here. They want to see a champion. Uh, here in South Australia, we're more or less one of the smaller states in racing. We were very big, but as the racing industry went on, the eastern states more or less took over. But we've seen a lot of champions start here and then leave but this is one that's came here and this is why the people are here 30,000 people here today it's a track that who in its time has welcomed takeover target but this is something else indeed black caviar is something else she's competing today she's going for a world record 20 wins straight she's a mayor she's got the she captured the imagination of the country of the nation and uh, so many people are here today and the memorabilia I'm, I mean they're selling things with her name on it, her colours on it. Everyone wants to be in salmon, pink and black today. So it's just how it's grabbed our state and it's the best thing that could have happened to our state in racing. I mean, she really is a great mare. People back home say she's not beating much. What would you say to them? Well, you know, I, I was fortunate enough to, over the last couple of Melbourne Cup carnivals, when she won the Patnack and she won the Newmarket, I interviewed her on the pony. And, you know, I was thinking of ways that I think, oh, they'll catch her, they'll beat her, they'll beat her, they'll beat her. And, you know, I left there at the last Melbourne Cup Carnival I said they'll never beat her because she is just so dominant she, and, and to see her walking around she is a horse that she'll come into the mounting yard today with 30,000 people and they'll nearly be on her back and she will be walking around the mounting yard half asleep but as soon as the gate opens she's got a jockey on her that loves her I think she loves the jockey there's a bond between them you watch the race and when, when uh, Luke Nolan will just say when they straighten up and you just say okay girl let's go and she doesn't do anything to Luke presses a button and then she goes. The mayor's attitude to racing might really help her when she comes to the UK because of course to be a champion she's got to come and win the Diamond Jubilee Stakes at Royal Ascot but her sleepy nature presumably will help her on the flight and when she gets to uh, in an environment she's not familiar with. She, she is so precious here in Australia mate you wouldn't would, you don't realize how how precious she is to us because she came over from Victoria through the week they had two floats they had a horse that looked like her on one and they had her on the other one and they had one float follow the other in case it broke down and they would put her on. But no one knew where she was. She was taken in. She was like uh, hidden. And then the last couple of days, we've come out and we've seen her. Today, she will walk around this mounting yard and um, there will be, they will be 20 deep just to glimpse at a champion. And she is a champion. And when she goes over to, to uh, the UK, I'm sure that your people will, will be drawn to her. Attitude-wise, beautiful. She's one of the mares that you look at her. She's jet black. She's got that startling appearance. And the black really brings out the colour in her. And, and you know, her 
her presence in a in a in a in in a race is just something that you you'll remember it forever. You'll see her Royal Ascot, but it's only really when you get up close and personal with Black Caviar that you get an idea of just what a magnificent looking mare she is. She's big, she's built like Mike Tyson in many ways, a big, big strapping mare, but she moves like Beyonce once she hits the track. So the scene was set, and at 3.53 p.m. local time, Black Caviar was ready to strut her stuff once again. They're off. And the most anticipated race this century is underway. And Black Caviar is going to lead early from Spursific and Just Sibyl is up there from Tabulated. Being followed along the rails by Shekinah. Further back came Lone Rock ahead of that run of Power Princess. Second last is Sistine Angel. All fried up is last. Nolan Keane to come off the pace. He allows the other two to go clear. At the 650 metre mark, it's Just Sibyl down on the inside, leading from Spursific the outside. Black Caviar, she sits two lengths away, third from Shekinah. Then came Power Princess from Tabulated Sistine Angel. Then came Lone Rock from Valentine Miss, and last is all fried up. They're on the home turn. The anticipation is starting to build. Black Caviar goes up and hits the lead. On the outside, Power Princess is trying to match her. At the 250, Nolan's got a stranglehold on Black Caviar. She looks at the 30,000 strong crowd and says, geez, I'm good. No, I'm not good. I'm the best you've ever seen in the world. Black Caviar, she's better than a perfect 10. She comes on, she's 20 out of 20. Black Caviar, full lengths. It was a day that saw Black Caviar make Australasian history, but now she must conquer the world. Part owner Neil Werritt is in no doubt the mare's a one-off. She's a fantastic horse. As I said, we've been on a magical ride, and uh, we, you know, the next uh, two months we're hoping to come to Ascot and uh, see, uh, see her do her stuff at Ascot, and that's what we're dreaming of now. Tell me now, how nervous are you of that trip? Because you know effectively if you keep on here in Australia, you'll keep winning. But going to England does pose different problems for you. How scared are you of losing your unbeaten record? Oh, I'm not scared of losing it. I'm, I'm more scared of her travelling in the plane than, than losing on the race course. So um, I, I think that, uh, you know, we're going to be up against some strong opposition over there. Um, and I... I truly believe that she's up to it, and uh, our sprinters in Australia are very good, um, good, good quality horses, and uh, we believe that that's you know the the benchmark for the world, and we we believe we can put her against anything. Is it the prestige as much as anything? Do you feel that you have to come to the UK to prove she is the best sprinter on the planet? I don't know about go there to prove it, but. We do want to go, and we've wanted to go for over 12 months, and it is prestige, as you know, and going to Ascot and, uh, and winning there will be a, you know, a real feather in her, her cap. And uh, I think then putting her on the world stage so everyone can see her, I think that's what she deserves, and uh, um, I'm just so looking forward to it. Obviously, at this stage, we can't look too far in advance, but let's say everything goes OK at Ascot. There's a chance she might then back up in the July Cup at Newmarket? Yeah, I believe so. Peter said that she'd, he'd like to run her twice. Um, and that's, uh, we've booked our flights around going to uh, the July Cup on the 14th and uh, leaving uh, London on the 15th and coming home. So uh, uh, to our knowledge, uh, depending on how the horse travels, how she performs and as she pulls up, uh, Peter would like to run her twice and so would we. So that would be a great... Uh, going a long way for one race, so if we could run another the two, that'd be fantastic. I'm sure you haven't seen many of the headlines in the papers in the UK, but some of them have been saying you're dodging Frankel, the great horse, of course, the world's best horse, I may add, Neil, according to the official handicapper. Um, uh, are you dodging her, or indeed is he dodging you? Well, it's hard to say. I think uh, it's always difficult when one, one horse is a 1,000, 1,200, probably 1,400 horse, and the other one's a 1,600, 2,000 metre horse. But um, I don't think Peter would dodge her if it was uh, a mile somewhere. Um, I don't think dodging's the right word for it. Uh, but I think, um, as we've all said, I mean, I, I would, if I owned Frankel, I wouldn't want to put him against Black Caviar. The big prize money's gone up at 
Goodwood for the Sussex Stakes. A million pounds has been offered by the owners of Kipco and, and the people supporting the Champion Series in the UK. Yeah. How much money would you need to go for that race? If, if say, there was five million, would that tempt you? Uh, I don't think it's money. I think it's the horse and what Peter wants. I mean, all the way through, we've let Peter basically do what he wants, except we've said 12 months ago we wanted to go to Ascot. And he's planned a whole uh, preparation to go to Ascot. It's her first run back. If we weren't going to Ascot, we put it, well, it probably would have ran three times by now. And the TJ, we would have probably ran the all-age today and, and probably gone to Brisbane. So um, that's why we've, we've set her for this, you know, for Ascot. And uh, as you can see today, she probably wasn't her fittest today. She was probably, uh, you know, 80%. Um, hopefully in two weeks' time, she'll get to over 90% and then we'll be ready to go. And just give us an idea, in your words, what British racegoers can expect at Royal Ascot? What will they see? See a lot of Australians there, that's for sure. Um, I think everyone, uh, everyone that I know of is going. Uh, we've got 120 in our party and every board member of every racetrack around Australia is going. Um, we're going to have a big contingent of Australians there. I think it'll be a lot of fun. Um, I, I just uh, hope uh, you guys are ready for us. And of course, we've changed the name to Diamond Jubilee Stakes this year from the Golden Jubilee to represent the Queen and the, and the Royal Family. There's always a big bet on what colour she wears in her wagon as she comes down the Royal Track. Surely this year, the shortest price favourite has to be Salmon on Diamond Jubilee Day. Yeah, I, I hope so. If she needs a dress, I'm sure we can send her one to uh, match the colours. <laughs> Oz Horse, promoting the Australian thoroughbred.